Hello Grade 12 and a warm welcome to all of you. At the end of the year, you will be required to write an NSC or National Senior Certificate Examination for History. In order to prepare for this examination, it is important for you to know your work and therefore you have to study all the relevant content. However, it is equally important for you to know the skills that we teach you because although the examiners are testing your content knowledge, they are also testing your ability to extract, interpret, analyze, and argue. But don't worry because I will help you to revise these skills so that you are better prepared for your examination. In today's lesson, we're gonna start with history paper one, and we're going to take a closer look at question one. Now, question one is a source-based section which focuses on understanding the origins of the Cold War. Today, we are going to revise level three comparison questions and how you should go about to answer it. However, remember that all of the skills that we are revising today will also apply to all of the other topics that we cover in grade 12. Okay, so let's start off by briefly taking a look at all of the things that we are going to cover in today's lesson. Firstly, I'm going to give you a very brief outline of the origins of the Cold War and what content you should focus on when preparing for this section. Then, for the rest of the lesson, we're going to be revising your source-based skills. Our focus today is going to be to take a look at how the examiner will ask you level three comparison questions and how you should go about to answer these questions. Let's start with a brief outline of the origins of the Cold War. When you prepare for the section of work, it is important that you understand that the Cold War was an ideological war between two world powers of the time, America and the Soviet Union, capitalism versus communism. You must know how America and the Soviet Union both attempted to spread their influence in Europe after World War II. This includes things like the Iron Curtain, America's policy of containment, which consisted of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plans, and the Soviet Communist Information Bureau, or Common Form, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comicon. You must also study the Berlin Crisis, the period between 1948 and 1961 in Berlin, with specific focus on the Berlin blockade and the Berlin Wall. Now remember, in accordance to the Grade 12 CAPS document and the examination guidelines, the examiner can focus on any of these aspects when they examine you in your NSC examination at the end of the year. So it is very important that you study all of this content in preparation for that examination. Now that we know the content that we must study, let's focus on the skills that we will be examined on. Remember, the examiner is not only going to test your content knowledge, they will also test the skills that we need to study history effectively. So today, the skill that we are going to focus on is level three comparison. Now in your NSC examination, the examiner will examine the skills that you will need as a historian to research history effectively. Remember, history is the study of past events. Historians are the detectives of history, and it is their job to try to reconstruct the truth based on the available evidence. Their task is to collect or extract all the relevant evidence from various primary and secondary sources, they will then interpret this evidence. Once the evidence has been interpreted, they will evaluate its reliability in order to know whether or not it is a credible source of information. Then the historian will evaluate its usefulness as well as the limitations of the evidence in helping them understand the historical event. They will then corroborate the evidence with other sources by focusing on the similarities and differences. Once this is complete, they will use the information they have gathered to write an article, essay, thesis, or a book about the historical event. 
Now, all these skills will be examined in your NSC examination. Each skill will fall within a specific category of questioning. There are three categories. Level one questions will test your ability to extract evidence from various sources. Level two questions will test your ability to interpret evidence from various sources. And level three questions will test your ability to evaluate a source's reliability, usefulness, and limitations, as well as test your ability to compare similarities and differences from various sources. Okay, so let's take a look at level three comparison questions. These are questions to test your skill of evaluating the similarities and the differences of the information in various sources. Now, how do we know when a question we are reading is a level three comparison question? We need to look out for the following word, compare. When we see this word in a question, then we know that we are dealing with a level three comparison question. And then you have to compare the information from both sources. Now that we know how to identify a level three comparison question, how do we go about to answer it? Well, firstly, you need to make sure that you know what the question is asking you to compare. So you underline that part of the question. Then you also need to take note whether the question is asking you to look at the similarities or the differences. And you're gonna underline that part of the question too. Once you've done this, then you need to look at how each source describes what you are asked to compare. And then you're gonna write that down. Your answer will be structured as follows. If the question asks, how does the information in source 1A support the information in source 1B, in other words, similarity, then you will respond by saying, source 1A says, and then you're gonna explain what source 1A says, source 1B supports this because it says, and then you're gonna explain what source B says. If the question asks, how does the information in source 1A contradict the information in source 1B, in other words, the differences, then you will respond by saying, source 1A says, and then you're gonna explain what source 1A says, and then you'll say, source 1B contradicts this because it says, and then you'll explain what source 1B says. You must always make sure that the information you are comparing is the same. In other words, you must be talking about the same thing. If we have to take the Marshall Plan, for example, and we are looking for similarities, we will ask ourselves, what does Source 1A tell us about the Marshall Plan? And how does Source 1B support this? Or, what does Source 1A tell us about the Marshall Plan? And how does Source 1B contradict this? In both instances, you can see that I'm still focusing on the same thing, the Marshall Plan. Okay, so this is what a typical comparison question will look like. So you can see that it says, compare sources 1A and 1B. Explain how the information in source 1A contradicts the evidence in source 1B regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan. Now, when you look at this question, what part of this question must we highlight, which is going to tell us that this is a comparison question? If you said the word compare, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level three comparison question, we have to answer it. But first we need to know what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question again. Compare sources 1A and 1B. Explain how the information in source 1A contradicts the evidence in source 1B 
regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan. What do you think this question is asking us to do? The question is actually asking us to look at how source 1A differs from source 1B in how it explains how the Marshall Plan is being implemented. So now that we know what the question is asking us to do, are we finally ready to answer the question? The answer is no. Why? Because we still have to look at the mark allocation. Okay, so I know that this might sound silly, but taking notes of the mark allocation is actually very, very, very important. And the reason is because so many times students throw away unnecessary marks because they don't actually check the mark allocation. And the mark allocation is very important because it actually tells you how many facts you need to include in your answer. So in front of you, we see an example of what a mark allocation in your NSE examination will actually look like. So you can see that the example says one times two equals two. And when we look at those numbers, it is important for us to understand what each number actually means. That is gonna then help us to understand how much we need to write. Now the first number, the number one that you see in front of you, that is the most important number for you as the candidate writing the examination, because that number tells you how many facts you have to write. So you can see that that number says one, which means that if this is your mark allocation, you will only need to write one fact. The second number that you see, which is a two, that number tells you how many marks you will get for each fact that you give. So in this case, because it is a two, it means that when you give your one fact as an answer, you are going to get two marks for it. And then the last mark, that just indicates the total amount of marks that you will receive for this question. And you can see that it is two marks. Because for one fact, if you are going to receive two marks for it, your total will be two marks. Now back to our comparison question. If we look at the mark allocation, then how many comparisons must we have in our answer? If you said two, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Now, this is often a mistake that many learners make when they write their final NSC examination. Some learners think that you receive two marks for mentioning one source and two marks for mentioning another source. But this is not the case. One comparison which equates to two marks, actually means that you have to mention both sources in your one answer. That will then give you two marks. So ultimately you are being marked on the comparison. And because it's two times two, you have to give two different comparisons. So you're going to compare source 1A and source 1B once, and then you're going to make another comparison. You're going to compare source 1A and source 1B again. And when you do that, then you will be awarded your four marks. So that's something that is very, very, very too important to remember. Okay, so now that we finally know that this is a comparison question and we understand what the question is asking of us, and we know that we have to compare it twice, we can finally answer the question. But before we do that, we actually have to go and look at the sources and we have to go and find the comparison. Okay, now remember the question is, 
how does source 1A, which is the source on your left hand side, contradict the information in source 1B, the source on your right hand side, regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan? So let's first take a look at source 1A. Source 1A is a French cartoon, which means that this is going to be a Western perspective. Okay, it is showing us the Marshall Plan in a very positive way. It's explaining to us that the Marshall Plan is over there to protect Europe against what? It's telling us it's protecting Europe against famine. If you look at the back, the tank, it's got a little flag on it that says famine. Okay. Um, so ultimately, when we're looking at Source 1A, we see it's a very positive perspective of the Marshall Plan. This cartoon is most likely also pro-Western bias. It's, it's a cartoon that's supposed to portray the Marshall Plan in a positive working way so that Europe and especially the West can support it. Okay. When we look at Source 1B, Source 1B is completely different. This is a Soviet cartoon. So in other words, this is going to be from a completely different perspective because Source 1A was a French cartoon. So that's a Western perspective because France is a part of the West. And Source 1B is a Soviet cartoon, which means it's a Soviet perspective. So the way in which this cartoonist is going to portray the Marshall Plan is not going to be in favor of the Marshall Plan. It's going to be against the Marshall Plan. And when we're looking at the actual cartoon, then we see that this cartoon is definitely against the Marshall Plan. It isn't portraying the Marshall Plan as building up Europe or saving Europe or protecting Europe. It's actually portraying the Marshall Plan as destroying Europe. You can see that big man over there and that big man represents capitalism. That's a typical kind of caricature that cartoonists like to use in order to portray capitalism, wealth, um, and he's holding a bat and or a stick, and on the stick is an S, so it's actually in the symbol of the dollar sign, which is the American currency, so we know that he's using this to destroy Europe because he's hitting and breaking down Europe ultimately, okay? So we can see that the perspectives are two completely different perspectives. Now what we need to do is we've got to take all of this information that we spoke about and we have to structure it into an answer. OK, and that is what we are going to do next. Now, when you compare sources, this is what your answer should look like. OK. You can see that I color coded it. And the reason I color coded it is because I want you to see that every single comparison that I make, I am referring to both sources. I'm not just referring to one source. And if you look next to the entire comparison, then you will see two ticks. And that means that you have to give one full comparison where you actually speak about both sources before the marker is going to give you two ticks. Okay, so that is very, 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 very important that you must remember. Because like I said, that is one of the big mistakes that a lot of learners make at the end of the year. Okay, and then you're throwing away unnecessary marks. So let's look at the comparison. Now remember, the comparison is we have to look at how source 1A contradicts source 1B. In other words, how are they different in their perspectives or in the way in which they representing the Marshall Plan being implemented in Europe. Okay, so the first answer says Source 1A portrays the implementation of the Marshall Plan from a Western perspective because remember it's a French cartoon, France was pro Western. And Source B contradicts this because it portrays the implementation of the Marshall Plan from a Soviet perspective, because remember, it's a Soviet cartoon. Now, the important words that I used in that answer is implementation of the Marshall Plan. And why do I say that that is important? 
because those words are linking my answer to the question because the question asks how do they contradict each other regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan. So it's not just about the fact that source 1a is a Western perspective. The, the focus of it is what perspective are they giving? What is the, the information that this perspective is giving? So in other words, it's a Western perspective of the implementation of the Marshall Plan, which is what the question focuses on. And source 1b is a Soviet perspective of the, of the implementation of the Marshall Plan, which again is what the question is focusing on. Okay, the second point, you can see that I said source A portrays the implementation of the Marshall Plan in a positive light. Why do we say so? Because when you look at source A, then you can see that it is showing the Marshall Plan as building Europe, protecting Europe. That is positive information. And source B contradicts this because it portrays the implementation of the Marshall Plan in a negative light. And how do we see this? Because remember, in the cartoon, that capitalist character is destroying Europe using the Marshall Plan. So that's very negative. So again, you see that I use the words implementation of the Marshall Plan, and that links our answer back to the focus of the question which is the implementation of the Marshall Plan. We have to see how the sources contradict each other regarding the implementation of the Marshall Plan. So you can't just start and look for any type of contradiction of any type of information. You have to focus on what the question is asking you to focus on. Okay, then the last one over there that I gave was Source 1A explains that the Marshall Plan was implemented to prevent famine in Europe. And then Source 1B contradicts this because it shows that the Marshall Plan will destroy Europe. OK, so that is a contradiction because on the one hand, the source is saying that the Marshall Plan is going to prevent famine. Why? Because it's going to build Europe up. Europe's economies are going to be able to build itself up again. And that's going to prevent famine. And because famine is being prevented and Europe is being rebuilt again, then ultimately that is going to lead to a positive outcome. Whereas Source B is saying that the Marshall Plan is destroying Europe. And how do we see that? Because that character is physically breaking Europe down with that dollar sign bat that he has. OK, so what's the important thing that you need to get out of this answer that I gave you over here? You must remember that you have to compare twice. You can see that I've done it three times, but that's just to show you that there are many different options that you actually have when you are looking at the comparison within two sources. You only have to write down two comparisons, but one comparison or in one comparison, you have to talk about both sources like you can see I have done. And then you have to do it another time in order to get your second two marks. OK, so now that we've completed the examples and you know how to identify and answer a level three comparison question, you're going to practice it on your own. So what you're going to do is you're going to download the attached activity. Then you're going to take a few minutes to complete it. You must make sure that you follow the instructions of the activity very carefully. You're going to pause this video. Then you're going to complete the activity and once you have completed it, you're going to unpause the video and then we're going to mark it together. Hello Grade Twelves, and welcome back. Okay, so you were supposed to complete the activity for me. Now let's mark the activity together. You were given the following question. Compare sources 1A and 1B. Does the information in source 1A support or contradict the evidence in source 1b regarding the construction of the Berlin Wall. 
Now, when we look at that question, what part of the question must we highlight, which is going to tell us that this is a level three comparison question? If you said the word compare, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level three comparison question, are we finally ready to answer this question? The answer is no. Why? Because we first have to understand what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question together again. Compare sources 1A and 1B. Does the information in source 1A support or contradict the evidence in the source 1D regarding the construction of the Berlin Wall. Now, after reading the question again, what do you think this question is asking us to focus on? Okay, so this question is asking us to take a standpoint. They're trying to ask us to make an argument because it says, does the information in source 1A support or contradict the evidence in 1B? So we have to choose. We've got to look at both sources and then we must decide for ourselves, does source 1A support source 1B or does source 1A contradict source 1B? Then we have to understand what information are we supposed to focus on when we look whether or not source 1A supports or contradicts each other. And that information is the construction of the Berlin Wall. Construction means the creating of the Berlin Wall, the building of the Berlin Wall, um, everything surrounding the Berlin Wall being built. Okay, so the question ultimately is asking us to look at source 1A and source 1B. We've got to look out for evidence that focuses on the construction of the Berlin Wall. And then we must decide, is the evidence in both sources supporting each other regarding that or contradicting each other? Is it different regarding that? Okay, so now that we know that this is a level three comparison question and we know what the question is asking us to do, are we finally ready to answer the question? The answer is still no. Why? Because we haven't yet looked at the mark allocation. So I want you to look at the mark allocation and then I want you to tell me how many times must we compare source 1A and source 1B? If you said twice, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says two times two. Okay, so now we are finally ready to answer the question. But before we do that, we actually have to go and take a look at the sources. So let's read through the sources together and then we try to find evidence of the construction of the Berlin Wall. Okay, so here you can see that I've already highlighted the evidence. And the reason for this is because this is actually what you were supposed to do in the activity. So I hope that yours looks very similar to mine. And if it doesn't, it's not a train smash because remember, practice makes perfect. Okay, so when we look at source 1A, the context of it, it says that the following source is an extract from an article entitled Why the Berlin Wall Rose and How It Fell by Erin Blakemore, published on the 8th of November 2019. It gives the reasons for the construction of the Berlin Wall. So in other words, it is explaining to us why the Berlin Wall was created. Okay, so in the source it says, 
In the early hours of August 13, 1961, as Berliners slept, the GDR began building fences and barriers to seal off entry points from East Berlin into the western part of the city. And you can see that I highlighted that point. Okay. Then it goes off on and says, the overnight move stunned Germans on both sides of the new borders. So in other words, they were shocked. They weren't expecting it. Then the source goes on to say, the wall was actually two parallel walls punctuated with guard towers and separated by the death strip, which included guard dog runs, landmines, barbed wire, and various obstacles designed to prevent escape. East German soldiers monitored the barriers 24 seven, constructed surveillance on West Berlin, and had shoot to kill orders should they spot an escapee. Okay, so there you can see that I highlighted three points of information. The first point, to seal off entry points from East Berlin into the western part of the city. The second point, stunned Germans on both sides of the new borders. And the third point, had shoot to kill orders. Now let's look at the second source, source 1b. And we look at the context first. So the context says, this is an excerpt. Matthias um, Winkler interviewed Harmut Richter, who witnessed the construction of the Berlin Wall. Okay, so this is an eyewitness. This person was actually over there when they created the Berlin Wall in 1961. Okay, so this is an interview between the two. So the interviewer says, where were you on August 13th, 1961? And the interviewee says, I was spending my vacation with, with relatives in West Berlin's wedding district. I remember the day well. It was a Sunday. It was hot and we were planning to go swimming just like we had done on previous days. We were eating breakfast and my uncle came into the kitchen all confused and told us to come look. Kids, they're closing the borders, he said. No one was talking about a wall at the time. Now there you can see that I've highlighted something and I've highlighted it in the same color as the previous source purple okay so let's quickly before we continue to look at the rest of the source let's quickly compare those two so on the one side it's saying stunned germans on both sides of the new border so in other words the germans were shocked by this wall that was being constructed and then source b he's saying my uncle came into the kitchen confused now if you're confused you also don't actually know what's happening. So on the one side, they're saying that Germans were stunned, they were shocked, which means that they didn't know what was happening. And on the other side, here we have an eyewitness who confirms this. And he said that his uncle was confused. He didn't understand what was happening, okay? So when we're looking at those two, if we have to decide, do these sources support or contradict each other? What would we say? So in other words, are they the same? Is the, is the information that it is giving the same? Or is it different? The information that it's giving supports each other. It is the same. Because over there we can see that he is explaining exactly how it happened, and in source 1a, they're saying exactly the same thing. The sentence structure is obviously different, but the information that both sentences are giving is exactly the same. The outcome is the same. The way in which people reacted is the same, and that reaction is confusion. They were stunned. They were shocked. Okay, so over here we have now already seen that there is things that are similar. 
So if we had to choose whether or not this source supports, these sources support each other, then we would definitely have to say that these sources support each other because we can actually see the, the similarities within both sources. Okay, so let's continue to read. Then it goes on to say, I remember the pictures from the West Berlin side. The border patrols, I saw people jumping out of windows, some smoke balls were flying and thrown back across the barricades. I was fascinated by that. My uncle probably felt it was getting too dangerous because he told us he because he told us kids go swimming. Maybe this is all gone again tonight, by tonight. So over there again, you can see that I've highlighted something and I've highlighted it in green. So now we have to look at both green highlighted parts and then we have to look whether or not they are similar in what they are saying or whether or not they contradict each other in what they are saying. So in the first source, it says had shoot to kill orders. So in other words, the East German guards were shooting people who were trying to escape. OK, that's ultimately what it means. Then on the other side, it's saying smoke balls were flying and throwing back across the barricade. So we can definitely see that there is some form of firing that's happening, gun firing that's happening or bombs that's being thrown. And when we're looking at that information, then again, we can see that it's similar to each other, even though it's not 100 percent exactly the same. The the information that it's giving is very similar to each other. The point that both of them are making is actually very similar. And that point is that there was fire, firing that occurred. People were shooting at each other. They were throwing bombs at each other, things like that. Okay, And this was obviously to prevent people were trying to escape and the um, Berlin authorities had to prevent people from escaping. Then if we continue, then we can see we didn't think about it anymore. I was 13 and thought that the GDR, Dem um, German Democratic Republic or East Germany was the better German state. I didn't take it seriously. The only problem was getting back home. My parents couldn't come and get me. So a Red Cross car picked me up. I said goodbye and just like I always did and wanted, sorry, I said goodbye just like I always did and wanted to come back during the fall vacation. I saw my relatives again at Easter in 1963, so two years later. Um, we met at the zoo in East Berlin. Okay, now over there you can see that I've highlighted something in blue. So let's compare it to the part in blue that I highlighted under source 1A. So in source 1A it says to seal off entry points from East Berlin into the western part of the city. And then in source 1B, I said my parents uh, um, couldn't come and get me. So if we look at those two parts, then again, we can see similarities because on the one source or in the one source, they're saying that because they sealed off entry points, people couldn't actually come and go. People couldn't leave East Berlin to go to West Berlin. And in source 1B, he's confirming this because he's saying that his parents couldn't leave East Berlin to go and fetch him in West Berlin. They had to send a Red Cross car over into West Berlin to pick him up, to take him back home. Otherwise, he would be stuck in West Berlin. Okay, so now that we have made the comparison and we have decided that this is definitely, these sources definitely support each other, now we need to look at how are we going to write our answer down. Okay, so here you can see what your answer should look like. Now, because this question asked us for our opinion, it asked us whether or not we thought the sources support or contradict each other. We have to first state our opinion, okay, or our argument. And what that argument was, was support. So you can see in my answer, I started my answer by saying support. And then I have to explain why I say 
the information in source 1A supports the information in source 1B regarding the construction of the Berlin Wall. And I have to do it twice. Why? Because the mark allocation is 2 times 2. So in front of you, you can see that I have given you three reasons. And those were the three reasons that we highlighted in the source. You're not going to write three reasons down. You are only going to write two reasons down. But I put three reasons here to show you that there are different options. OK, so let's take a look at each point. The first one says source 1A shows that the Berliners did not anticipate the construction of the Berlin Wall. And then I gave the evidence, which you don't have to do. OK, and then I said source 1B supports this as Helmut's uncle was confused by what was happening. And then I give the evidence to support this. OK, so again, in one comparison, I have mentioned both sources for two marks. And that's what a comparison is. You have to mention both sources in order for you to actually make the comparison. And for a comparison question, you get two marks for making one comparison. So if you want the second two marks, then you've got to make another comparison. So then you could say source 1A shows that the wall would prevent East Berliners from leaving. And then I gave the evidence. Source 1B supports this as Helmut's parents couldn't leave to come pick him up. And then I gave the evidence. And again, for, for talking about source 1A and source 1B, I only get two marks. Then there is a third option if you wanted to use it. Source 1A shows that it became difficult to escape the wall into West Berlin. And then the reason that I'm giving is had shoot to kill orders. And Source B supports this as Helmut witnessed violence erupting after East Berliners were trying to escape. And then I gave the evidence for that. OK, so what is the important thing that you must remember when you are writing your answer down? Your comparison has to talk about both sources and you have to do it twice because remember, you have to compare the sources twice in order to get your four marks. OK, so let's quickly recap what we've learned. Step one. You've got to look for the word to identify the question as a level three comparison question. And who can remember what that word is? The word is compare. If you see the word compare in the question, that automatically means the question is a level three comparison question. And then you need to know how to answer it. Step number two is you going to then read the question carefully so that you know what the question is asking you to compare. Step number three, we're going to look at the mark allocation so that we know how many comparisons we have to make. Step number four, we're going to look at each source and how they describe what we have to compare. And then step number five, we must remember that when we are writing down our comparison, our answer, we have to mention both sources and we have to compare it twice. Great 12, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for your patience and participation. I really hope that I got to teach you something in this lesson today. And remember to continue to practice because practice makes perfect. I hope that you guys all have a lovely day further.